Hello friends, Big Steve Green here, and today we're going up against the Wendigo. Before we look at setup and lore, let's go ahead and take a look at the investigator and deck we're going to use today. And today we're going to use uh, everybody's favorite rogue investigator to forget about, Schizo Tool. As you can see, he is the first rogue to come out. He came out during the um, very first campaign. Um, I don't see a lot of people playing skids outside of, uh, I know Vase plays him in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Um, he has gotten a lot better um, over the years, but when he started, he was definitely uh, tricky to play. Um, our deck here, we're going to take advantage of the standalone rules and use 19 experience, and we're going to get two basic weaknesses here. Um, I'm going to try Ornate Bow. Lola Santiago in the Moon tarot card in order to really bump up that um, agility skill and utilize that for um, everything we need it to utilize for. Um, we've got some decent amount of clue gathering in the events as well as um, taking advantage of some of the really, really good Guardian skill cards. So there's the deck. Let's go ahead and spawn it. We need to get two basic weaknesses, so I'm going to build this deck twice. And anytime now, thank you. So we picked up Hyperchondria as our first weakness. And then I'm just going to do it again. And Paranoia. So I'm just going to look through this deck and grab Paranoia. There we go. Hypochondria and Paranoia will be our weaknesses. Um, if you don't remember what Hypochondria does, it is this card right here. So there's Hypochondria. Uh, pretty bad for uh, Skids considering his um, he has more health than Sanity. And Paranoia, also pretty bad. We've got Lone Wolf. We're uh, like any rogue, we are expecting to utilize a lot of resources. So I'll go ahead and put that back into the deck. Move all of this over here. I'm running Charisma, forgot to mention. Um, Lola Santiago is really, really good. Leo's really, really good. I don't want to decide between them both. So we're going to um, run Charisma instead. Not have to decide anything. Here's the Chaos Bag. Um, pretty standard stuff here. Not too bad. Um, I want to copy paste the scenario card right here because I know what's going on. Um, so, nothing too bad. Um, the elder thing is pretty bad. Basically, we should be plus two and then we don't have to worry about um, these uh, bad symbols, which is um, pretty much what usually goes on in a scenario on standard. Good to be at plus two. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the campaign guide. So this is a follow-up scenario for Cthulhu, the role-playing game. Um, I'm going to just uh, keep this up for a little bit and then I'm going to move on here. Um, so let me know if you've played the uh, the role-playing game uh, up against the alone against the Wendigo. Um, let me know how cool that is. I haven't played the role-playing game. Um, not much of a role player, to be honest. Uh, we got some rules about rivers. So we have a couple different options moving from um, into another from one river to another river location we can walk along the river which seems like the safe choice but it takes a double action and then scroll down here a little bit we could navigate which reminds me of oregon trail for some reason but we have to test um will or agility uh, one plus x x is the number of moves you took at step three that is moving to a river location of your choice. If you fail, you take damage or two damage if you really fail. So I'm going to keep open a tablet to have this particular uh, page on it. So hopefully we can remember this um, this particular rule. Then we got guide assets. Um, at the beginning of the turn, you can give this card to an investigator who can take control of it. 
Um, we just have one investigator, so it shouldn't matter too much. And if we control one guide asset, we can only use one of them to trigger their reaction ability during each test. Then we have um, these story cards, which we have, excuse me, which we have right here. We'll decide these during uh, setup. And let's get back into the story here. Um, we got the prologue and the setup. So let's go ahead and read the prologue. September 1926. You have just witnessed the resounding trial of Dr. Nadelman, a person close to you, who is the rising star at the Department of Anthropology at Miskatonic University. Nadelman is the only living member of the science expedition, launched to explore a wild valley in northwestern Canada called North Henia. Sylvia Davidson, Norman Faulkner, and Bernard Epstein the three newly graduated students who accompanied him have disappeared. The Arkham authorities were keen to ensure that justice was done. Dr. Needleman was found guilty of involuntary homicide. However, everyone was able to see during his testimony that Needleman's physical and mental health were severely deteriorated. An ugly throat wound, which still had not healed after weeks, prevented him from speaking normally. When Needleman's words could be understood, they were implausible rants full of man-eating monsters and Indian spirits that doomed his expedition. After the judgment, mystery remained as to the real fate of the students, and Nadelman was to leave for Arkham Asylum to receive proper care pending a possible appeal of the trial. Standing in front of the court as you meditate on the best way to prove Nadelman innocent and rehabilitate his name, many relatives of the missing students come to find you. Just like you, they are not satisfied with this judgment that has not shed light on the fate of their loved ones. They tell you that the Canadian Mounted Police stopped the investigation after the disappearance of many of their men. They are desperate and ask you to find the three students. Knowing that, as a close friend of Dr. Nadelman, you have access to all the information in his possession, and that they will provide you with all the support necessary to discover the truth. Soon after, you follow the footsteps of the previous expedition, starting by train from Arkham to Central Canada. During the trip, you read Dr. Needleman's expedition notebook. Needleman's records are clear and precise at the beginning of the adventure. Several entries later, Needleman notes that the Indian guide of their expedition, Charlie Foxtail, abandoned the group after seeing the tracks of a being Charlie called the Wendigo. Then the information quickly becomes confusing. The writing becomes increasingly jerky and unreadable. As it stands, you were not able to make sense of the disaster that supposedly befell the expedition. There are nonetheless enough interesting and concrete leads to begin your investigation. Once at the terminus of the train, you are heading towards the Mackenzie River. Your destination is Fort MacDonald, an outpost of the Mounted Police, which will give you access to the wild valley of North Henia. The weather is still good on the river, Hank, however higher up in the mountains. The cold and the snow begin to settle. You have a short time before the arrival of winter to discover the truth about Dr. Nadelman's disastrous expedition. And let's go ahead and get into setup. So we already put the Fort McDonald Jetty and Indian Territory locations into play. We start at the Jetty. Then we need to shuffle the three North Hania locations and put them into play. One directly north of the jetty, one directly to the north of the first, and one directly north to the second. So let's go ahead and do that part. As you can see, we have, this is set up for us, the Indian Territory, the jetty, and Fort McDonald. We start right here. And then we need to shuffle these territories. I love how now um, this mod will show little bits of setup um, if you mouse over things before you change anything, of course. So we'll do this. These are the North Hanina. Hanina. Try to get that right. Okay. Randomly take one of the mountain range cards and remove it from the game. Take the remaining six locations and shuffle them. Randomly put into play one location directly to the east and one location directly to the west of each North Hanina location. So we have two mountain ranges here. 
This is going to go away. This is going to go here. I'm going to shuffle. This go like a book top to the right and so on. Okay. Take the story cards, story side up. For each pair of cards with the same name, remove one at random from the game. The three remaining cards named Sylvia's Fate, Norman's Fate, and Bernard's Fate make up the student's fate deck. Set this deck aside. Okay. So we have Norman's Fate here. We have Sylvia's Fate. And Bernard's Fate. These will go away, and these will make up the student's fate deck, which I'm just going to put right here. Set the Expedition Notebook, Indian Guide, Tomahawk, Ithaquas, Knowledge, and Old Injury Cards. Those are set aside out of play. And then, let's see if we can need any more of this. Shuffle in the encounter dar uh, cards to build the encounter deck. If you don't have a rock token in your chaos bag, add a rock token to your chaos bag. Chaos bag. Okay. Yeah, we have a rock, so we're good to go. When, if you're in um, Tabletop Simulator, when you're working with these tablets, I find that you need to um, exit out of the window in order to safely get out of there. Otherwise, you can scroll with your mouse wheel and it'll keep scrolling this down, which is kind of annoying, but it's something you just get used to. Anyway, let's go ahead and read our agenda and act decks, and we'll get started. A Dark and Disturbing Valley Of all the delusions of Dr. Nadelman during his trial, something came up regularly. The presence of a creature that his Indian guide called the Wendigo. This being coming straight from local superstitions would be at the origin of the debacle of their expedition. Naturally, nobody believed Nadelman, but now that you're here, there, you cannot help but feel a great sense of discomfort as you descend into the valley in search of answers. Search of the Missing Equipped with notes that Dr. Nadelman took during his expedition, you venture into the Hania Valley hoping to find out what really happened to his expedition. You have some interesting tracks in the vicinity of Fort MacDonald. It quickly becomes clear that by venturing into the heart of the valley, you are most likely to find the missing students. Investigators at the same location can spend the number of crew clues needed to advance at any time. So we need three clues, and we have four thresholds on our first agenda here. Let's go ahead and shuffle up the encounter deck. Sure. That's good to go, and we will look at our opening hand, see what we get there. Okay, Lone Wolf, of course, is a great keep. Um, maybe Intel reports. Uh, I don't know when we're going to get to big enemies, so I don't know if I want that backstab in there for, uh, immediately. Um, same thing with the Vicious Blow. I think I'd rather have like a weapon, rather get a good... Um, a good ally out. Lone Wolf is definitely a keeper. Um, Intel reports could help us with tempo just because we don't want to um, be stuck somewhere. Uh, Skids only starts with three investigate which is okay but if you start at a place with high shroud um, you can slow you down a little bit. So we're gonna keep Intel report and Lone Wolf. We'll take three cards. Something worth fighting for, take the initiative, and steadfast. So, not fantastic, but I think we'll be. We will just roll with the punches after I drink some water. Alright, let's get started. We start at the jetty here. After a long trip from Arkham, you arrive at the terminus of the Mackenzie River shuttle, not far from Fort McDonald. Some canoes come and go, steered by native Indians of this region. You finish your preparation for the expedition and buy canoes to move easily and quickly along the Hanina River. 
The northern part of the river is nearby. It flows into the vast wilderness of the valley. You have a hard time finding a local guide who agrees to venture to North Canina, but eventually a broke young Indian offers his services. We have one clue. It is civilized river. This location is connected to the river location directly to the north. If no asset card with both guide and Indian traits is in play, spend three resources, the Indian guide enter play, enters play to control of him. Then we can walk along the river or navigate like we talked to. So it's connected to the river location directly to the north. Does that mean it's not... Um, Oh, I guess that just makes up for... No, I don't know. Should be connected to these two. But, first turn, um, Lone Wolf, of course. And then I'm kind of assuming we should get the Indian Guide into play. So I'm going to spend three more resources here. And go searching for the Indian Guide. See maybe assets here. Let's uh, search through these really quickly here. Um, Indian guide. Okay, here we go. He's back in the chest there. And you guide put him into play. It's not a. Doesn't take up an ally asset, which is nice. When you resolve a skill test in the wild location, you get plus one. Investigate. When you resolve a skill test at stage four of a navigate action or triggered by a river treachery card, you get plus one fighter, plus one evade. Forced if an investigator at your location reveals or put into play a Wendigo, Wendigo card, test two willpower before resolving the revelation effect. If you fail, put Indian Guide out of play. And if he is defeated or discarded, Put Indian Guide out of play. Okay. And we have one more action. Uh, we could investigate at a plus one. Um, what are the bad things that happen? A lot of bad things that happen if we um, if we fail to draw bad tokens. I'm not sure that's something I want to do. Um, we can just take a resource. That's probably what I'm going to do. It's set up to play expensive things next turn. So. We'll do that. Go into upkeep now. Ooh, draw 45 automatic. Gain a resource. And then we will grab a doom and see how bad this uh, encounter deck treats us. Rapid. Hazard River. Attach rapid on nearest both river and wild location. Um, that would be right here. Let's just attach that and then read it. Force. If an investigator moves into or out of the attached location while performing navigate, the fight or agility test at stage four of this action gains plus two difficulty and plus one damage if you fail. Forced at the end of a round, reveal a chaos token. If a bad symbol is revealed, attach this card to a both river and wild location directly to the east or west. Otherwise, discard this card. So do we have a, a river location to the east or west? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, let's take our Lone Wolf Cash. I'm just going to have to remember I'm going to put horror on this. Hopefully that'll help me remember to do something at the end of our turn. Um, we could play the 45 automatic. That seems pretty good. We could play intel reports. We could start drawing cards and trying to get some uh, help with our investigating. I think that's a solid first turn. It's just to draw cards, see what we get. Just blow is not going to help us in this task. Um, I don't want to be laying around doing nothing, and I can at least evade enemies, so I'm going to play Intel Report, mess with my camera there just slightly, uh, grab the clue off of this, and then 
we can walk along the river here. Actually, we don't have the actions for that. Intel isn't fast, is it? That would be ridiculous. It's already an overpowered card. Um, let's go to the Indian territory. Civilized Indian. The native Indian territory of this region is vast but sparsely populated. The natives are distant with, distant with you and seem to dread to venture away from their homes. Dr. Nadelin's notes indicate that Charlie Foxtail, a guide of his expedition, lived here before disappearing on their journey. It was by paying the hospitalization costs of Imola, Charlie's wife, that Dr. Nadelman could secure his services. You can visit Imola Foxtail to learn more about Charlie's fate. Okay, we got another clue. It's too bad we're not placing automatic clues here, but it's a minor inconvenience, I suppose. And then, Imola Foxtail. An investigator may attempt one of the following two actions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Parlay. Test investigate six. You can spend up to five resources to redo, reduce this the difficulty of this test by as many points. You try to convince Imola that you only want her and her husband to be safe. Test fight three. You're trying to intimidate Imala in order to make her confess where her husband is hiding. Record that the Indians are hunting you down. If you succeed, reveal the isolated land. <coughs> okay. So, <coughs> I assume we don't want to get the Indians against us so if we wanted to parlay we would need to um spend a bunch of resources and try investigate six which might be okay however that's our last action so we're just going to draw skill test is a wild location this is is not wild okay let's draw a card Ooh. hypochondria take a resource We'll see when we want to get rid of that. We'll uh, take a doom and a card. End of the turn. <laughs> we need to do this really fast. Skull, so it would move. Um, attach this card to both river and wild location directly to east or west. Otherwise, discard. Um, these aren't river locations, so I think we just discard this. I could be wrong. Could be the first uh, play mistake of the run. We'll see. Anyway, we've got a bright, shiny new encounter card to deal with. Unexpected obstacles put into play in your threat area. The first time you perform one of the following actions, walk along a river, navigate, move, fight, or evade. Each round, it costs one additional action. At the end of the round, reveal chaos token if you draw a bad symbol. It stays in play. Otherwise, discard this card. Alright, so that's going to be somewhat inconvenient. I'm going to take Lone Wolf Cash. Um, we could uh, take it slow, play the automatic, and get rid of Hypochondria. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm not happy about it, but it is what it is. That'll be our turn. We need to roll this. Okay, bad symbol, so it stays in play. Draw a card, take a resource. On the lamb. On the lamb, usually use that for symbols, but maybe sometime I won't. Draw a card. Wild Indians. Uh, prey, lowest remaining sanity, that's us. Hunter, if wild Indians are engaged at the end of the enemy phase, disengage them and move them to the nearest wild location. Okay, so we're going to need to take care of these guys. We are plus one at the moment, which isn't fantastic, but we can uh, commit some skill cards. Um, let's see, which one do we want to part with? Take the initiative. I'd rather have that for um, something a little more important than this. We could play steadfast. That would give us um, three fight symbols. That's pretty good. 
We don't want Vicious Blow because we can deal 2 damage without it. We could do on the lamb, but I think I will just do Steadfast. So I'm a 3. Steadfast, we have 10, um, we have 14 remaining health and sanity. So it's plus 3. So we're at a 6. The cultist is minus 2. So we take care of the Indians. Then, um, we need to draw some investigation. I could commit, take the initiative, but at, um, this is a make it plus two, which is at the point where it starts to become appealing to try it. Um, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Thirteen out of sixteen symbols is pretty good, right? 5, 10, 15, 16, then 5, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 out of 16. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm going to take the initiative to try and investigate. And we got it. If there's a beginner's tip I could give um, for trying to get better at this game, always know what your chaos bag looks like or at least know to what degree do I need to be above a test to feel good about it. Anyway, um, rant over. <laughs> Got the clue. Do I want to um, try to complete this? Probably. That means I'll take a resource to end my turn. Draw a card. Uh, we will do this first, actually. Another bad symbol stays in play. Hospital debts. Okay, so to be honest, we're playing a standalone. This does nothing. So we're kind of lucky with that. Um, I'm hoping the river actions are just up here. Because this is not a river location, so I think I've been playing that okay. Let's go ahead and roll over the doom. After some time spent in the Henina Valley, you can no longer deny the evidence. The Wendigo described by Dr. Nadelman is not just superstition with local Indians. You've met him briefly a few times, but so far you've managed to avoid him. It seems straight out of a nightmare, and several disturbing events happen when you feel its bestial presence or when you see in the distance an immense silhouette with deer antlers, which vanishes as disappearing into thin air by an icy breath. Now that you understand better why the previous expedition was lost in the immensities of this region of Canada, and you start to imagine the horrors that the small group of academics had to face. Each investigator tests willpower 4. Investigators who fail take one direct horror. Take the cards from the Wendigo myth encounter set, then set aside the Wendigo. Shuffle the rest of this encounter deck and set in the discard pile into the encounter deck. Okay. Let's test willpower four. Obviously, um, not much we can do about that. Forgot to take off a um, an ammo. I could play where's my um didn't use the initiative. I could play the initiative and be plus one, but I don't think I will. I think I'm just going to accept the loss here. We've been drawing a lot of skulls, um, which is bad. We take a direct horror, and I lose a resource. Then we need to shuffle in the Wendigo myth set. Okay. And we need to set aside the Wendigo. Set that aside. And then this goes into the encounter deck. This gets flipped over into the encounter deck. We'll shuffle that up. Something dark is coming. You are now on the alert. The slightest noise, the smallest movement in the trees could be a new vision of horror or worse, a more concrete manifestation of the threat looming over you. Like Dr. Nadelin before you, you become lost in this valley, and you often think about turning back to your 
prevent your expedition from suffering the same fate as his. All civilized locations gain resign. You leave this cursed valley without further ado. Make sure shuffle. Draw a card. Winter settles. Test willpower four. If you fail, choose and discard an asset you control. You cannot take one direct damage instead. Ouch. Um, might be the Indian guide here. Yeah, probably be the Indian guide. We could take the initiative V plus one. I think this is actually worth it. So I'll be plus one. Never mind. We lose the Indian guide, I think. So he just gets removed out of play. And keep going. Take a little more cash. I think I do want to parlay here. Um, let's see if we have good enough here. Um, I believe I just took Lone Wolf Cash. And spend up to five resources. So if I spent four resources, it would be a, an investigate check of six. So I'd be um, three against two. I can use on the lamb to be plus a lot here. So let's see, I'm a six with on the lamb against six. So I'm even, plus one, plus two, plus three. It's gonna be that kind of game. Okay. In that case, never mind. I'll just keep going here. Get to Fort McDonald. <coughs> um, let's flip this over first. The fort is a remote outpost of the Canadian Mounted Police, overlooking the Mackenzie River. If you ask the Mounted Police officers, you may be able to see the results of their investigation of missing students. This has one clue. Parlay, test, investigate four. If you succeed, take the clue from the token pool. Collect a limit of one. Then we can spend two resources to heal two damage or two horrors. Again, limit once per game. And that's our turn. Let's check this again. Okay, you get rid of that now. Am I supposed to... Let me see. On to... This case in rivers, cannot move. Okay, it's just uh, between rivers and rivers. So I think I've been playing that, okay. Let's draw a card. Uh, Intel report. Pretty good. You know what would be nice? would be some help investigating. But it doesn't seem like um, they want to give that to us. Instead, let's get unexpected obstacles. Awesome. I take Lone Wolf Cash. I'm. Let me draw a card first. It's terrible. Um. Oh well. I play Intel Report to grab that clue, and then we can advance the act deck. So, drew a card and I played until a card. You have discovered some clues about the disappearance of one of Dr. Nadelman's three students. You do not know yet if it is Sylvia, Norman, or Bernard, but you are sure the previous expedition was here. The lead investigator randomly takes a card from the student's fate deck and reads the first part of it. So. <clears throat> Sylvia's fate. Dr. Needleman was not very explicit about the tragedy that befell Sylvia. Never nevertheless, it is quite clear that this occurred on the edge of a dense forest on the mountainside just beside the Hanina River. 
Now you see the dis in the distance a large forest which seems to match the description of the anthropologist's record. Reveal the unpenetrable forest. Put Sylvia's fate aside without reading the second part until a tr reaction trigger allows you to read the second part of the card. Okay. Um, so we need to find the impenetrable forest. There it is. I'm not sure if you have to put that on there, but do that. Two clues. And unfortunately, a shroud of four, which would have been a better use of our intel reports, but oh well. If there are no clues on this location, read the second part of Sylvia's Fate story card. Okay, um, I have one resource. I can't really use that right now. Let's go back here to the jetty. And maybe we'll grab an Indian guide. That might be a good idea. Anyway, let's... Uh, Draw for this. Okay, good. Actually, gonna have to use this uh, mechanic, so it'd be nice if that wasn't in play. Uh, let's not draw from the discarding pile. Let's draw here. The moon. Another card I wish I started with, but oh well. Add doom. We have a uh, six as our threshold. Skinwalker. There are no animal enemies in play. Skinwalker gains Surge, then discard him. Ambush. If you are on a river location, Ambush gains River Trait. Test Agility 4 if you fail, take a damage. Okay, so... That's the River Trait. Sure how that matters, but... We're tied. Uh, unfortunately, this guy doesn't give us a um, help. Of course, lose a resource and take a damage, right? Yeah, take a damage. Okay. Uh, Lone Wolf Cash. Discard that. I feel like I'm going really slow. Um, I'm sorry, what's the other act deck? I forgot to read that. You now know in which direction to search for one of the students. To your knowledge, the previous expedition always moved as a group until it's tragic end. So you think you'll find the other students' tracks along this path. What you'll find at the end of this path, you do not know. But after what you have already endured, you dread the worst. Investigators at the same location can spend two clues at any time. Then the lead investigator randomly takes a card from the student's fate deck and reads the first part. When you've discovered Norman's fate, Bernard's fate, and Sylvia's fate, advance. Okay, um, we need to go to the next river location. Um, we could get an Indian guide. Not sure, what he does again. Um, gives us skills to help our navigation. Um, our skill test is fight, 1 plus x, um, where x is the number of moves you took at step 3. So that's just one location. So it would be test agility 2, which is pretty easy. Okay, we're just going to take that immediate, um, take that normally. If you fail, take damage 2 if you fail by 2 or more. Okay. If I was doing better with tempo, I think I would grab an Indian guide at this point, but I don't feel like I am. So we'll try to go here. Um, we need to test one. Um, one plus X, so two agility. We're at four, so we're plus two. Right. Okay, we take two damage. Fail by two or more, um, a four against two, yeah. Two damage, lovely. Um, let's go ahead and at least we get to move, I think.
Yep, that's fine. And then the walk along the riverbanks is long and difficult, but canoeing could, would be dangerous. Tell me about it. Nevertheless, you finally find traces of the passage of the previous expedition. This has one clue per investigator. And same thing, we can choose to walk along the river or we can investigate. So that was our first action. Um, we might as well go to the forest. Is that where we're supposed to? Yeah, okay. There, actually, let's draw a card. I really need investigation help or this is just gonna get slogged down here. That's not help. And then we'll move here. Um, well, our last weakness is paranoia. I, I almost, I need to just draw cards. Maybe I should have, um, yeah, probably should have gotten streetwise in this deck. Kind of didn't want to play with uh, taboo cards today, but we have Lula, we have lockpicks. We already saw the uh, Intel report. But card take a resource. We have all the uh, resources in the world. I haven't really thought about using his ability. Maybe that's something we can do. Um, add another Doom. We're at three. Out of six. Wolves. Hunter retaliate. If wolves are not engaged in the enemy phase, shuffle wolves into the encounter deck. So if you don't kill them, you can uh, just shuffle them back in. But we will fight this. Um, and I'd like to be more than plus one. So we'll take Lone Wolf Cash and I guess another Steadfast. Fight these guys. Oh, we'll gain two resources. That's nice. And this, these will be uh, done for. All right. Um. I'm just going to, I guess I'll play Emergency Cash. I forget. It's Paranoid, the Resources one, or the Hand one. There's one of these that discards uh, all but one card in your hand. There's one that just loses all your resources. I think that's what we had was the Paranoid one. So maybe we'll save those in reserve. I'm, I'm going to draw cards. I, I need something to help me with Investigate and... Before I get it, um, I'm not going to have a chance. Thank goodness, there's lockpicks. Let's flip this over. Draw a card. We need to discard, of course. Um, I don't think I'm going to play the moon. Um, could help us, it would help us with uh, our lockpicks, but um, not enough that I want to waste a turn and three resources on it. This is definitely something I want to have in my opening hand. Anyway, complaining aside, um, is that a doom draw card? Sudden Flood. Each investigator at a river location tests fight for or agility for. Each investigator that fails takes two damage. And until the round, end of the round, investigator on river locations cannot perform investigate or navigate actions. So we'll just test agility for. I'm not gonna lose any cards, so we're even. We've taken so many skulls in this. So we take two damage. And we lose a resource. We're gonna have to seriously consider Fort McDonald soon um, for the healing. Um, we have three damage left. I don't know if I want to do that now. It would take two actions. It would be nice to actually get something done here in this. But we'll take Lone Wolf Cash. Let's just see how many actions this takes. Leo is one. Emergency Cash is two. Lock picks move. That sounds good. So Leo 
brings us down to one resource. Emergency cash. And this is our legal action. Emergency cash gives us three lock picks. This is our third action. And then I'm going here to the forest. That'll be my turn. Let's go ahead and flip these over. Draw card. Um, we were at one because we played pickpockets. And hey, we're starting to get good cards now. Good. Five out of six. Cold Spirit. Test Willpower 3. You lose willpower if you're in a mystical location. For each point you fail by, take a horror. We're in a wild location, not mystical. That means we're minus one. Plus one. Hey, some luck. Awesome. Yeah, in case you didn't know, Skids is a big drawback is that willpower, so he can get beat up by encounter decks um, pretty often. Anyway, Lone Wolf. I'm going to play Lola. I'll put her here because I have a trench coat. And then Emergency Cash. Keep my resources up. Um, we could play something worth fighting for, but I want to. I want to lock picks. So this is a four. We are a plus one plus one. So we're four investigate and five agility. So we're investigating an eight. Okay. And we won by two or more, so we don't lose a supply, and we get blue. And then our final action. Um, we could just we could play something worth fighting for, which might be pretty good. Um, we could just take a resource, get ready to take the last clue with Lola. But we can do that in upkeep. So I'm gonna play this, I think. And go to zero. That just means we have to investigate. We won't get a free, we won't be able to afford Lolo next turn. But it's an eight against four. We have to draw this, which I'm sure we're very capable of drawing this, but I'm just going to do that. So that's our turn. Let's uh, draw a card, take a resource, flip everything over. And then, speaking of flipping stuff over, we're going to have to flip over this agenda. Oh, always fun with our enemy. <laughs> um, BCO creature. Revelation, shuffle discard pile into the encounter deck. And unfortunately, holding alt isn't going to help us, so I'm just going to zoom in. Spawn location with the most investigators. Prey, the investigator with the least damage on him and his ally assets. Hunter retaliate gets plus two investigator health. Um, he's a hunter, so I'm not sure if I want to necessarily evade and move away from him. Oh, lovely, we're gonna do that too. Okay, we'll put him right here. Anyway, the Wendigo, Wendigo hunts you. There can no longer be any doubt. You are in the territory of the Wendigo, the ancestral spirit feared by the Indians of this region, who seeks human prey to make a feast of their flesh. The creature that flung itself on you seems to be a man who turns into a Wendigo. The more time passes, the more likely you are to meet the real Wendigo, the one who has been stalking you since your arrival in the valley. You have noticed that human blood seems to attract it, like a great white shark, finding its prey in the vast oceans more easily when it is injured. Civilized location, get resign. Forced, when an investigator or an ally asset suffers at least one damage, add a doom to this agenda. Collective limit of one doom per round added by this effect. This effect may advance the current agenda. I wonder if this is going to be the end 
of the scenario then or if we might get something right there yeah actual Wendigo we'll see let's draw a card unexpected obstacles can't okay, seen that before we need to take care of this guy um, I could backstab backstab and manual dexterity I could try to shoot it a couple times but that's a lot of um, resources I can't afford backstab even with lone wolf um, Problem is we really, I mean, we could spread the damage out among our assets to take a resource and an attack of opportunity. We're doing fine with horror. So I think I need to do that because I want to backstab him. So first action, take a resource. We take two damage and one um, horror. He does have five health on him. I still think that's okay. You can backstab and then try to shoot him with the automatic. So, um, there, 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 and then we have to add a doom. Um, I'll put it here. Not sure if that matters, but that's how we'll do it. And then we will play backstab. So we're five right now. Five against four. Make that plus three with manual dexterity. So we're a seven against four. Okay, sweet. We get win and we gain two resources. And then if this does three damage. Um, forget to highlight, backstab. Heals plus two damage, which is nice. Let's start shooting him. Um, we're gonna commit vicious blow. That would make us a five. That make us plus one. We only need to hit him one time. Plus one is five, six, seven, eight, nine out of. 16, 9 out of 16. If we commit both vicious blows, we would be, again, pretty favored here. So I'm going to commit both, put our eggs in one basket, plus 3. Okay, good. So, he's dead. The bestial creature. Used a lot of our, uh, lot of our ammo there. But what you gotta do. Um, let's uh, go ahead and use lockpicks. Oops, I hit the wrong button there. Awesome. Don't hit R on the cards. That just makes everything a little messy. See, it's now it's not connected to that, that spot. I'm going to copy paste, I think. Let's see if this card is going to behave more. Awesome. And then we can just delete that whole mess. Okay. Use lockpicks. We're 8 on 4. Rock is minus 2. If you succeed, place a clue from the reserve on the mountain range. So this guy right here. And we grab a clue. Um, I think. No, I think we lock picked it um, last turn. So this will be the second clue. So we get a victory point. Not that it matters too much because I'm not going to be I'm obviously playing this as a one of. But let's read the second part of Sylvia's Fate story card. You end up finding Sylvia's corpse lying face down in the heart of the forest. It seems from her tracks that she is wandering in this natural labyrinth, searching for a way out. When you turn back, you feel that something is not like it was when you started. You cannot find your tracks. 
nor find your way around this cursed forest. You have discovered Sylvia's fate. Flip this card. The Heart of the Forest. Put the Heart of the Forest into play. Move each investigator from the impenetrable forest to this location. This move does not does not trigger attacks of opportunity. You cannot leave this location unless an investigator in the heart of the forest succeeds at an investigate action in the same round. When an investigator performs investigate in the heart of the forest, lose one action on your next turn. The heart of the shroud gains it gets minus one shroud for this investigation. Okay. So we're going to have to investigate this eventually. Um, I'm just going to take a resource and be more prepared. Anyway, that's our turn. We're going to flip over for unexpected obstacles. It gets to go away. That's nice. Flip all that over. Guard. Oh boy, the moon. Maybe we'll play it, maybe we won't. But let's get a doom. Trapper. Test investigate two. You are in a wild location. Test investigate four instead. Reach a point you failed by, lose a resource. Assume this is wild. Yeah. So test um, investigate four. We're tied with Lola. Hey, we, we win that one. Awesome. Take a lone wolf cash. So, forms investigate in the heart of the forest. Alright, which means we can use lockpicks, according to my interpretation. Um, so, we're an 8 against 4 again, but it's an 8 against 3. If I lose an action on my next turn, I think if I lose future actions, I'm going to denote that with a red. Um, a red token. Anyway. Minus four. So we won by one, which means we lose a supply off our lockpicks. And we can leave this location. Awesome. Let's move two. Uh, move three will go here. And then um, we could grab a clue for free. Which sounds good to me. Um, okay, yeah, that sounds good. And exhaust Lolo here. She's one of the best um, above zero XP allies, that's for sure. And then I think we get to same location. Oh, we could have earlier, but that's fine. Um, let's get rid of two of these clues. Okay, we get to read another student's fate. Or at least the top part. You come across a group of native Indians who do not seem aggressive. On the contrary, you gain their confidence and they speak to you of a white man who is the guest of the neighboring tribe of theirs. From their description, you think it's Norman. The Indians point you in the direction of the other tribe land, which is not far from a swamp that you had not found very inviting when you saw it in the distance. Reveal the swamp. Let's see, right there, that's convenient. Put Norman's fate aside without reading the second part until a reaction trigger allows you to read the second part of this card. Okay, I'm just going to put it there. And we've got two clues. If there are no clues on this location, read the second part of Norman's fate story card. So, our only um, hesitant... Um, Cause to pause, I guess, would be, do we want to get to Fort McDonald and heal two damage? Because we are three away from dying. We do have plenty of assets to soak damage, but that's never fun. 
Um, we have a decent amount of evade too. I think I'm just going to keep going and go here. Anything else we need to know? Nope. Just uh, take the clues off and we move on. So that's our turn. Um, we're going to leave that untapped for this. So I'll just leave those both tapped in some strange world of logic that works. Draw a card. Gain a resource. Backstab is good to find. We're at 3 Doom now, out of 8. Wild Indians. And if they're engaged at the end of the enemy phase, disengage and move them to the nearest wild location. Okay, um, we can shoot them. We would be plus one without any help. Evade them at plus one, two. That's also an option. Um, but they will. They won't move anywhere. I don't know if I want a bunch of um, enemies following me. But that last shot from our uh, automatic might be best to use somewhere else. Um. I don't know. I guess we'll try the more permanent way of getting rid of them. Uh, we got a resource from Lone Wolf for plus one on the Indians. Yeah, I didn't think that was going to work. Let's try to evade again. Same math. We're plus one. Lovely. If you fail, enemy and ally takes one damage and one horror. That means Leo or Lola get to go. Um, let's try it again. Let's not learn our lesson. Okay. So at least we don't get to take the damage from the Indians, but they're going to go right back on us. It's always disheartening. Those plus one tests you have to take, and then you get massive consequence because you fail them. At least we drew a Leo. Um, this goes away. Take another Doom. Rapid Investigator moves into or out of the attached location while uh, performing it. Navigate. Um, nearest both the river and wild location. Well, that's there. Just remember at the end of the round we need to test something. Okay. We have to try to evade him and then do something. So, okay, that's good. Lockpicks. Oh, uh, we get that. Actually, we'll play Leo now that we have uh, resources to do so. So, we get the Leo action back. We will lockpicks. Okay, get the clue. Um, we could spend the clues to grab the other student's fate. I don't think that's an action. That is correct. So, might as well. Bernard's fate. At the bottom of the snow-covered hills, you find pieces of clothing that belong to Bernard. Nadalyn's records are not clear. You suppose Bernard blindly fled from something. The tracks you find lead to a strange mound visible from afar, which stand on which stand odd stones. Reveal the site of ancient stones. Nope. Nope. There it is. Again, another one of these. Uh, clear the location of clues, and you're good to go. Uh, I don't want them stacked on top of each other. There we go. All right, last action. Still need to set up there. Um, need to start drawing answers. We also need resources. Let's just draw. Hey, your ornate bow. Too bad we um, need lockpicks right now. But if we ever have to face the um, 
the Wendigo. That's going to be our way of uh, dealing with him. Um, oh, we guess we have two actions. Um, let's draw a resource, I guess. Then let's go back on us. Do that. Draw a card. Take a resource. Low, low insurance is not the worst card to draw. We have five doom. I see or a aura. Play put into play in your threat area. You cannot play events, nor commit cards to a skill test at the end of the round. Discard. Okay, good, good time to get that. We'll try to evade at plus one. Nope. There we go. Um, I need to get Lone Wolf Cash. Oh, we need to roll for this too. Uh, it does get a bad symbol, so attach this card to a, a both river and wild location directly to the east or west. Um, yeah, that's discarded then. You know, the uh, locations have the prerequisites. Um, so that's good. Okay, and then we can lockpick. We're an eight against three. Rock token. If you succeed, place a clue from the reserve on the mountain range. I don't know if that's a good thing or bad thing. We haven't dealt with the mountain range yet. Um, I guess I can look at this location. Not be revealed except by an investigator in this location. He uses the following trigger. If there are two clues in the mountain range, reveal it except by an investigator on this location. Okay, so we're not on it. Okay, so we'll deal with that later. And uh, that's the last clue. So we get to read Bernard's fate. You find Norman surrounded by a tribe of savage Indians who seem to worship him like a god. With his Indian clothes, shaved head, and tattoos, he looks like a local shaman. When he sees you, Norman approaches and confuses you with Dr. Needleman. He decides to leave with you to announce to the world the good news. The great Wendigo arrives. And soon, this world will be rid of all misery, all suffering. His speech terrifies you, and you hope to be able to reason him. Hope to be able to reason to him before he spreads his madness all around him. Record that you have discovered Norman's fate, and that Norman is alive. Flip this card. Norman Faulkner, not himself anymore. Revelation: An investigator in the swamp takes control. You cannot put horror on Norman Faulkner. If Norman Faulkner, or Falker, I'm sorry. I guess it's Faulkner. If he is defeated or discarded, put him out of play, erase that Norman is alive, and record that you let Norman die instead. At the beginning of the enemy phase, place one doom on Norman. Test, investigate four. If you succeed, put Norman Faulkner in the doom tokens on him out of play. Okay. So not the ally we really wanted, but can't really do anything about that. We get to advance the active deck, however. After many hardships, you finally discovered what really happened to the three missing students. These discoveries were deeply disturbing, and you doubt you'll be able to convince their loved ones of what really happened when you return. But you know the truth now. And this truth was everywhere in Dr. Needleman's statements during his trial. If the anthropologist did not lie about the fate of his students, then his other statements that were deemed ridiculous may also be true. In your campaign log, record that you have discovered the fate of Dr. Needleman's students. North Hanina's Mysteries If you manage to leave this place without incident, you will be able to take with you all the evidence accumulated so far which would certainly help to prove the innocence of Dr. Needleman. 
However, while rereading the story of Dr. Needleman's adventures, he realized that his expedition had discovered several unknown wonders of this region that would amaze your colleagues. These consist of an ancient temple of an unknown civilization and an immense gold vein hidden in the heart of the mountains. Discovering such treasures could make this expedition extremely profitable for you. If all investigators who have not resigned or been defeated are in a civilized location, you can advance this act at any time to leave the valley. So, we get to see how greedy we want to be. We have three turns, but not really three turns, because we have Mr. Uh, Faulkner out, and he... Um, he gets his doom in the enemy phase, and it can make the current agenda advance. Now, playing blind, I kind of assumed that this bad guy would come out here. But I don't know if I'm assuming correctly. That means um, this agenda shouldn't kill us. Even if it does, um, I would like to learn more about this scenario so I want to keep going so yeah we can keep on investigating and we have two actions left um, I'm not gonna play the bow yet because we're gonna to want to investigate and uh, our main way of doing so is still the lock picks so I'm just gonna move here we could navigate our way to the jetty Take that risk again. Should probably roll because I'm plus three now, I think. I want to get here and heal two damage. So I'm going to try to move here. Let's go ahead and read this again. Test agility one plus x. X is the number of moves he took in step three. So that would be two. So, okay. So we don't get hit there. That is good. Um, and that's our turn. Let's go ahead and draw a card. Gain a resource. We're going to deck ourselves, but fortunately, um, I don't think Beyond the Veil is going to happen. Not sure. Again, playing it blind, but I'm pretty sure Beyond the Veil is not going to be a mechanic in this game. So, here's hoping. You wild Indians get to go there. And Mr. Uh, Faulkner there gets a doom. Right here. We drew a card, we took a resource. Um, so we are at 5, 6, 7. So we're getting uh, in the danger zone here. Ambush. If you're on a river location, gains river trait. Test agility four. If you fail, take damage. Okay, we're at plus one. Um, it could commit manual dexterity. The issue with that is I'm going to want that to uh, help our bow out. So um, damage wise, Norman can take a hit. Okay, minus four. We uh, tie that, so that's good. All right, Lone Wolf Cash. We're going to go here. And we're going to spend two resources to heal two damage. So that was our first two actions. You can only do that once per game. Um, now we need to... Um, we could stay here and let the Indians come to us, the wild Indians. Uh, I think that might be a good idea. So we have two actions to kind of um, decide what we want to do. Forget what paranoia does because I'm dumb like that. Should have uh, remembered. We could commit to bow. That might be a good idea. And then just use Lola and our natural ability to investigate. 
I think that's what we're going to do. So take a resource, spend all resources. So lockpicks and the derringer need to come off the uh, come off the field, and we get to play the ornate bow. Here's the bow. If you haven't seen it yet, you almost like backstab on a stick, basically. Uh, but it's even better than that. So it's a pretty um, intriguing late game weapon for a uh, agility based investigator. Um, it is pretty slow. But considering you do three damage a shot, um, that's kind of the uh, the draw the drawback of it. And it would knocking another arrow would um, trigger attacks of opportunity, so that's also bad. Um, hopefully, you can evade an enemy if you're using something like the bow. You can evade, probably. Anyway, we're gonna move the wild Indians. Um, he gets another doom. That's Five, six, seven, eight. So that um, move the moves um, our doom on here. So get rid of this. We'll get rid of that. Put that to zero. And this is an all in the enemy phase. Yep. When diggers attack, you hear abominable howls nearby. Your blood freezes and your reason fails. When you realize what this implies, the Wendigo has found your trace and he is coming for you. This card rep replaces the current agenda. Put the Wendigo into play, civilized locations gain, resign. You manage to fear the fearsome Wendigo. The Wendigo is defeated, R1. So we're going to put that right there. Spawn any location connected to the Wendigo's prey. Okay, which is going to be the jetty. Pray the investigator with the most damage on them and their ally cards. Hunter, massive, gains plus four health. At the end of each investigator turn, ready the Wendigo. If a Doom is put into play, heal one damage on the Wendigo. For a three or four player game, heal two damage instead. Forced if an investigator is defeated at the Wendigo's location, he or she suffers one additional physical trauma. So... What makes this guy so freaking um, dangerous is that he goes on the beginning of the enemy phase. So before hunters move, which means this happens. We take three and two here. Um, we are going to lose some, lose some allies here. Faulkner somehow believed this, well, it's definitely your fault, so you can die. Um, and Leo here can take a damage. And then two horror. A horror and, oh, and a horror here. So, ouch. Um, they moved, so we're good now. So we take a doom. Is that doing anything? Oh, we need to draw and uh, grab a resource. Now we get to see. Doom tokens put it in play. Heal damage. Wow. So, yeah, every time he, um, every time the Doom phase goes, he gets to heal damage, which is pretty strong. Something is stalking you. Put something is stalking you into uh, play in your threat area. While something is stalking you is in your threat area, you lose a willpower and investigate. At the end of the round, reveal a token. If it's a bad symbol, keep it in the threat area. Um, so we send the Wendigo. I think I'm going to resign. Run away from said Wendigo. Um, we can take the damage and the horror without dying, so I think you resign first before you take damage, but I could be wrong with that. Anyway, we're going to resign here. We can't really deal with this, so maybe if we had like the moon and trench coat and Lola out, we'd be a four, five, six, 
yeah, we could be able to hit the Wendigo, evade, and like move away, probably. Although the Wendigo would ready and hit us anyway. So maybe if we could have like saved our backstabs or something for him, we could have had a chance, but yeah, no way. So let's go ahead and read um resign. Okay, we will advance this act. You have returned safely to Fort MacDonald with, mu with much evidence of the events that occurred during your expedition. Upon arrival, you were taken care of by the doctor of the small contingent of the Canadian Mounted Police based at the fort. He states that you are in good enough condition to answer the questions of the officers present on site. In your campaign log, record that you have enough evidence to clear Dr. Nadelin. Part 2. One, two. Officers listen to the story of your expedition with suspicion, then with amazement as they see the evidence you have collected. They thank you for your extraordinary contribution to the resolution of this case, after which you are requested to leave the fort quickly. You return to Arkham without looking back. Upon your arrival, you share with the students' relatives the fate of their loved ones. It is a difficult time for all these people. Although they finally have the answers to their questions, some truths are too terrible to hear. Most are shocked, but all end up thanking you for putting an end to this case. You feel a strong sense of accomplishment, which temporarily comes to relieve you of your suffering, and to ward off the nightmares that have inhabited your nights since you left the Valley of North Henina. Each investigator removes a trauma. If the Wendigo, Wendigo is still in play at the end of the game, record that you know that the Wendigo still roams the North Hanina Valley. Each investigator earns victory um, X. If you saved Charlie, each investigator earns one experience. Read the epilogue section. Epilogue. Do not read until all investigators... Have been driven insane or kill. Well, so should we read the epilogue? Did we die? I don't know. I don't read the following if all. In, oh, do not read if all investigation. Okay, my bad. Um, Charlie Foxtail is not in play. Um. We let Norman die. When you found Norman, there was something off about him, an inner force that could have led to your defeat. However, he was also the only remain surviving student that you could have brought back alive. His death haunts you, but not as much as the tears of his relatives when you tell him that Norman succumbed to the return journey of your expedition. Keep your, uh, at a, at a rock, basically. Anything else? Check your campaign log. Uh, read Dr. Nadelin's fate too, because we have enough evidence. Dr. Nadelman's appeal trial is held a few weeks after your return. You pre present yourself with evidence to clear the anthropologist. You make a strong impression on your audience, and although there is unexplained, excuse me, unexplained evidence in this case. Dr. Needleman stands free from he the hearing, full innocence being established. Sometime later, you learn with satisfaction that Needleman will resume classes at the beginning of the next school year. However, Needleman's physical and mental after effects still persist, with panic attacks every winter when the first snowflakes fall. And here's the credits. If you want to check that out. This is a pretty cool... Um, Scenario. I had a lot of fun. Um, I think with the uh, with the locations being randomized and the those extra side quests you could do, there's definitely some um, cons for uh, replayability. Um, definitely. Um, so again, here's the credits. 
scenario design, card design, and translation was by Vin Quest, and uh, proofreading by a bunch of people with gamer names, <laughs> and uh, we had some translations, some play testers, and cover illustration by Frank Victoria. So good job, guys. I had a lot of fun. Skids there needed to get his button gear as far as drawing the right cards, but after he did that, we were fine. Uh, paranoia was discard all your resources. So okay, we we weren't setting ourselves up with a terrible um, weakness draw there. So that's good. Anyway, um, sorry this took a while to put out. Um, I've been kind of mentally exhausted uh, after you know subbing, and this game is pretty hard to play and make a good video if you're mentally exhausted. So. Um, had to wait for other times. I think until school gets out, it's going to be more um, realistic that I make two videos a week for Arkham. So you should see a video on Monday and Mondays and Fridays going forward. And I'll add this to the description below as well. So I'm Big Stupid Grin. Hope you enjoyed your time here. And until next time, don't mess with the Wendigo.